Welcome back to Walking in the Parks. Yeah, right? Walking in the Parks. Walking in the Parks. It's a working title. That's right. Yeah. So we're here with uh, Scott Davidson, and he's going to be telling us some things about the Madison Parks Department. Now, you had homework last week. I did have homework, and I've done some studying, but yes. I had to call some favors in to get yes. the information. So, so what did you find out? How old is the park? The, well, you want to know how old the Parks Department is, and I talked to Pee Wee Lakeman, yes. who was the first full-time right. parks director. Right. Now, he stated that there was a park board in place probably as early as in the 40s, but the programming, I mean parks, obviously you're talking about facilities, but their programming didn't come into play until the 60s. And I asked him, I said, when did you start? Because I knew he was the first full-time director. He said, 1968. But he was not really the first director. He's the first full-time director. The first part-time director was John Paul. And many oh, people know yes. John Paul yes. as being with him and his wife with the Boys and Girls Club. It was the Boys Club That's at the time. That's right. And he was also, I think, back then, part of the civil defense. Yes. So he was very prominent and very important. Very so, active. Very active. And he was the first part-time director of the Parks Department. And actually, Pee Wee Lakeman, Harold Pee Wee Lakeman, was his assistant right. at the Boys Club at the time. And then became the first full-time Parks director in 1968. Oh, so wow. technically that's when I guess it kind of got organized right. under one parks director in 68. Oh wow. Well now we have another thing that you've done. Well you found out how old the park is, really how old it is. How of. old is the park? Yeah. Which park? Well the whole the depart the whole thing. How old is it? Well, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll we'll look up that one. Well, now. look because there's a lot of a lot of parks date back. Like like I mentioned in our last program, Crystal Beach right. was built back in the early 30s. Well, yeah. So I mean, and the Brown Gym was actually built before the 30s and then rebuilt after the flood of 37. Oh. So those facilities were in place, and I'm sure there were some neighborhood parks. Oh yeah. So I'm okay. Sure. So I'm yeah. gonna go look back. Well, I, let's just find out what the oldest park is. The oldest? That's if good. If we can. I'll see if we I can find out. We may not be able to, but if we can, we'll And I'll, I'll, find, I'll let you know where it's at, because there's a lot of community parks around, yes. and I'm sure there's some parks that used to be that aren't anymore. Right. So we'll find out, see if we can find out what we'll the see. first park was. Now, we have some things about senior citizens at the gym. Yes. And what are those for senior citizens? Yeah, because as part of our recreation side of things, we mentioned we have kids programs and we also have adult programming and adults are senior citizens. They're adults too. And, right. and obviously a lot of people know about the senior citizens dances on Friday nights. Those have been moved to the Moose Lodge and it's a, it's a great turnout for that. They love getting together. But there's other activities at the Brown Gym for right. seniors. Now there are three different exercise classes. Oh, wow. And these take place in the morning. Right. Uh, the first is on Monday from 9 until 10. Right. And there's one on Tuesday and Friday from 10 till 11. There is no cost. So they come down and they get their chairs and we have an instructor that takes care of them down right. there. And they get their exercise in and then we also have walking. And a lot of folks don't realize there is a walking, well, there's a walking yes. pass available at the Brown Gym. Right. They walk around the outside of the gym, and if you go 14 laps, that equals a mile. Uh, and somebody measured that way back when. I'm just trusting the numbers on that. <laughs> uh, you can buy a walking pass. We have those available. You right. can get a walking pass for a year for $35, or buy a walking pass for six months for $20, or if you just want to pay daily, it's a dollar a day to come and walk. Oh, and passes are better. Yeah, passes yeah. are better. You save somebody. We're trying to save you money. Exactly. Still. Uh, and uh, when pickleball is going on Monday through Friday from uh, normally 11 to 1, the walkers kind of stay out of the way. But there is walking going on at the same time, too. So right. your walking pass is good whenever the Brown Gym doors are open, okay. Monday through Friday. Uh, and a lot of people take advantage of that. And uh, some people need that just for exercise and or just want to come and meet their friends and walk and talk. Or right. their doctor suggests you need to get out and get some exercise. And here in the Ohio River Valley, it's not always oh. warm enough to walk outside. No. And it's raining. And it's raining. Yeah, and we have some nostalgia down at the Brown Gym so they come down and walk and yeah, I, a lot of folks are dedicated to their right. walking down at the Brown Gym so you're invited to come on down and be part of the walking crew at the Brown Gym. That's great. Yeah. Now there's some passes that they can get other than the Brown Gym. There's the pool passes and the golf. So and we, what do they need to do to obtain those? And we mentioned those last time we were together. Uh, come on down to the Brown Gym and see Dave or myself or Kim at the office. Uh, the uh, pool pass, I know the pool doesn't open until uh, Memorial Day weekend but as we mentioned before you can save some money if you get them now. Right. Uh, before the end of March through March 31st, the pool pass is $40. That's for all summer long while the pool is open. Right. After that, it goes up to $50. And then once the pool opens, the pass is $60. Right. And people might say, well, that's still kind of expensive. No. But it's not. No. If you think about it, if you go every day, because a daily 
pass to get in, it's five dollars a person to get right. in. So if you get your pass and you get that pass down, you go eight times, you paid for your summer of swimming right. in that one pass and the rest of it's free, like I mentioned before in our golf pass. The golf passes are also available now. It's five hundred dollars and that's for all season long. First uh, round is $500, rest is free, and you think, well, how does that break down per round? Well, a lot of the golfers have figured that part out because if you golf during the week for 18 holes, it's $18, or if you golf in the weekend 18 holes, it's $20. And a lot of folks uh, get more than their money's worth out of those golf passes. There's a lot of dedicated folks yes. that go up to the uh, Sunrise Golf Course and take advantage of that. So get your golf passes, you get your swim passes, get your walking passes, right. all available at the Brown Gym. Right, and you know, I know some people that almost live at that golf course. Absolutely. <laughs> so. and it's, it's like a home away from home it for is, them and yeah. there's a lot of folks that are very dedicated up there. Now we have something new we're going to do and we, we've come up with this. Actually, I didn't come up with it. Scott did. I did. So. Yeah, and whatnot because last program we did, I, I watched it a couple of times and I noticed I said, and whatnot a lot. I didn't mean to. So now we're just going to have a segment called And Whatnot. It's there kind of going to be a hodgepodge. We're going to throw stuff in That's there right. that you need to know about. So listen for And Whatnot as part of a, a walk through the park. That's right. Every time we get together. So it'll just be the kind of ending of our show yeah. and it's going to be And Whatnot. <laughs> yeah. And Whatnot. And I want to throw, we mentioned Pee Wee Lakeman is the first yes. full time director. And normally, it's been the history of the Madison Parks Department. If you're the Parks Director, you don't just stay for a little time. It's normally a long tenure. And I just want to mention some of the other Parks Directors. Yes. Actually, the ones that I know oh. that we've had. Now, after Pee Wee Lakeman, he went from 68 to 1983. So he served a long That's tenure. A long time. And he told me they had offices different locations. The current park office at the Brown Gym. And I did not know this. He said, but a Previously, there was an office for the Parks Department at the Brown Gym. Not the same one. It was down in the basement, all this other stuff. But other places, everybody knows where the Regatta office is down on uh, Vaughn Drive. Right. The park office used to be there. Crystal Beach, the number six firehouse, he said. And then at Sunrise Golf Course, there used to be a pool up there, Debbie. I didn't know if you realized didn't that know or not. That. It's back on Cobblestone Way where there's some townhouses. Okay. But it was before the townhouses were there. There was a swimming pool, and then there was a kind of a a maintenance building there, right. and that was where the park office was located. Oh, it was out of That's, the way. Yeah, it was out of the way a little bit, so you had to go around back by sunrise and get up in there, but I remember that pretty, pretty vividly. I did spend a few times swimming there at Sunrise right. Pool, and a lot of people did. So anyway, from 1968 to 83, Pee Wee Lakeman was your director. He was followed by Pat Hollow, yes. and then Jack Taylor, Steve O'Rear, Dave Munier, and then Pee Wee Lakeman came back for a little while, and then Dave Stucker. Yes. And Dave Stucker's our current director, and I think he's in his 10th or 11th year. Yes, he's been here a while. As being the Parks Director. So once you're named Parks Director, you or normally stay there for a long time. <laughs> Until you decide to leave. Yes, exactly right. Or there could be a change in, in the mayor's office and, and they go different directions. But for the most part, if you're in there, uh, that person stays right. and they do a great job because, you know, the Parks Department, Park and Recs Department, it's it's part of the quality of life of Madison. Right. And you need stability in that because you got to take care of the parks, you take care of the programming. You're affecting people's lives with everything right. that you do and every decision you make. So it's good to have stability in the Park and Recs Department. Well, that is awesome. Well, as always, you're just full of information. I am really full cool. of information. I'm glad you said it that way. <laughs> His eyes aren't brown, so he's not that full. <laughs> so, but it's great to have you here. Well, we it's awesome it. to be here, and I, I appreciate people calling in. Not calling yes. in, but if you have questions, get a hold of Debbie, get a hold of myself. Right. And we do have one comment oh, we do. from our previous program. He wants to answer this lady. Well, and, I, and, and we won't mention her full oh, name, no. or, but if you have comments, you can comment on the program that you watch. And we'll, on. And we'll make sure you get an yeah. answer of some kind. That's right. This is from Lisa. And Lisa says, I'd like to see a multi-use floor installed at Crystal Beach and be used for roller skating and other activities. All great ideas and I'll pass those along to the powers that be. She also wondered if Madison Parks Department has looked at some of the adult playgrounds. And I've kind of studied that a little bit. Uh, they're popping up at different locations. Right. Cincinnati has them. They're very popular over there. So we'll see if we can maybe do some investigative work on adult playgrounds. And also she'd like to see a little more activities down at the Bicentennial Park. Not just with the festivals and whatnot, but right. maybe some other things down there. So Lisa, we appreciate your comment. We appreciate yes. all the views. And we'll try to get you some answers to your questions. Uh, so we appreciate that. And they can't get better. if They, they can't have what you want unless you tell them what you want. Correct. And, you know, and then they can find resources and find out a way to do that. And and just remember, those don't pop up right now. Right. There's and a lot of stuff that goes in, into 
figuring out how to do that. And one thing is the pickleball program has is somebody had the idea and it started and, small yeah. and it, it it's blossomed and oh, a lot that of folks exploded. That yeah. didn't blossom. <laughs> It's a good explosion, though. Yeah. It's a great yeah. explosion. And, so, you know, we mentioned the number of parks around our community that the city would take care of, but I want to wish a happy birthday to a park. Yes. That is not a Madison Parks Department. It is Clifty Falls State Park. Oh, and yes. And they're celebrating 100 years. Can you believe that? And we talked about how blessed we are in this community, talked about the parks and the historic right. nature and everything, but there's not many communities that have a, a state park that's the magnitude yes. of Clifty Falls State Park. And yes. they do a great job over there. So happy birthday to Clifty Falls State Park. Well, we hope you all enjoy all the parks that are in Madison and Jefferson County. So and anywhere, if you can just get out to a park, that'd be great. Absolutely, it? absolutely. So stay active. So as always, we appreciate Scott for coming in. So we'll see you next week. Next week. Yeah, we're good. Knock, knock on wood. <laughs> I, well, it's not wood, it's plastic. Sometimes our schedule gets kind of wild so we have to change the day so it's not always the same exact day but yeah. that's due to outside influences but anyway so as always we thank you for watching